Last week, Warner Brothers announced that they were adding Supergirl to their lineup of films in their Worlds of DC Expanded Universe or whatever the hell they decided to call this thing. I'm not mad that they want to make a Supergirl movie. She's a very popular character at the moment, so it would make sense to capitalize on that popularity. And Warner Brothers has shown that they're okay with having two completely different versions of the same character on both movies and TV screens at the same time. No, if anything, I'm concerned that this is like the hundredth film they've announced for their grand cinematic universe that has been struggling to get off the ground since 2013. Only a very tiny amount of these films are in any sort of active development. The rest are either in the scripting phase or in the, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did this phase? Today I want to look at all of the upcoming films in the DC Cinematic Universe that are scheduled to be released between now and the heat death of the universe. I feel like this is something we should be prepared for whether or not these movies actually get released. The good folks at Polygon actually have a complete list of all the announced films in the DC Cinematic Universe, so I will be using that as my primary source. Just letting you know where I get my information from now so you don't accuse me of plagiarizing anybody. Sad that I have to say that, but that's the world we live in. On with the show. So right out of the way, in December of this year, we're getting Aquaman. I talked about it a few weeks ago, and my opinion on the matter still stands. This movie looks big and cartoonish, and honestly a lot better than any movie about Aquaman has any right to look. Still a little unsure about it overall, but I can honestly say I'm much more positive about it today than I was even a year ago. And that's gonna be followed by Shazam in April of 2019. And again, I talked about this a few weeks back. I'm really excited for this movie. It looks smaller scale, much more lighthearted, and much more natural looking than anything else in this universe. Also coming out next year is Wonder Woman 1984, the sequel to everybody's favorite DC Universe movie. We haven't seen an official trailer for this movie yet, but we have gotten some set pictures, official stills of Gal Gadot, Kristen Wiig, and Chris Pine, who's still alive somehow. Also, this bitchin' poster. Now I know this is actually a fan poster, not an official poster, but it's just too glorious to ignore. It really should be the official poster. And those films are actually the only DC films in any form of active development, either production or post-production. Everything else is really just announced. Okay, there's also the Joker origin movie. Yes, the Todd Phillips directed, Martin Scorsese produced, not starring Jared Leto Joker movie is being filmed as we speak and is scheduled to be released next year. I'm still in denial that the idea for this movie exists, let alone the fact that they're actually going forward with it. I think it's a bad idea to do a Joker origin movie. I think the idea of having two different movie Jokers out at the same time will be just confusing as all hell, especially if this is going to be separate from the main DC Cinematic Universe. And honestly, overall, this idea of doing Elseworlds style DC movies could have the potential to backfire drastically. I would love to be proven wrong, but honestly, I don't know. I kind of wish this would have just stayed the fever dream of some coked up Hollywood exec somewhere. But alas, those four films are the only DC movies currently in active development. The following films are in various stages of pre-production, some of them in the script writing phase, some of them don't even have a cast, a director, or even a writer. But these movies are still on the docket and could still very well get released. So I think it's within our best interest to talk about them because if they're willing to move forward with a Joker origin movie that's separate from the rest of their universe, they'll move forward with anything. Like the Cyborg movie. Ray Fisher is set to reprise his role from Justice League and so far only him and Joe Morton as Cyborg's dad are attached to this project. Now be honest, do you really want to see a solo Cyborg movie? It's okay if you do, I just don't think you exist. Green Lantern Corps, a movie about Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. Supposedly this is gonna be a buddy cop movie, but set in space. Jeff Johns is attached to write the movie, which is good since he single-handedly reinvented the character for the 21st century. But aside from him, that's all we know about the movie. Suicide Squad 2, written and directed by Gavin O'Connor with most of the original cast set to return. This one seems very likely to happen, folks. And hey, after the last Suicide Squad movie, they really have nowhere to go but up. Plus, David Ayer is not attached to the project, so it should be okay. Should be okay. 
Flashpoint or just the solo Flash movie. I honestly don't know anymore. This has gone through so many directors and rewrites, it's really hard to keep up. John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein are set to direct. Ezra Miller is still set to be The Flash. No release date yet. Honestly, just watch the CW show if you need your Flash fix for now. I feel like it's going to be a while before we see the Flash again on the big screen. Batgirl. Joss Whedon was set to write and direct the movie, but stepped down after he openly admitted that he didn't feel up to the task. At least he's being honest. Side note, where do we stand with Joss Whedon exactly? I know he's a very bad bloke and all, but in terms of his work, is it okay to still like Firefly and Astonishing X-Men? Just curious. Anyway, Christina Hodson is now writing the Batgirl movie and no one else is attached. See what happens. Nightwing. Chris McKay is directing from a script by Bill DeBlock. I know I pronounced that wrong, I'm sorry. Fun fact, Chris McKay actually follows me on Twitter. Or he did before he left during the great Twitter director purge of 2018. Sad time. The film is set to star Dick Grayson as Nightwing, so unless this takes place in a completely different cinematic universe, this will retcon Batman vs Superman, where apparently Zack Snyder thought it was a good idea to have Dick Grayson be the dead Robin and not Jason Todd. Have you ever read a comic before in your life, Mr. Snyder? Justice League Dark Academy Award winner Guillermo del Toro was originally attached to this picture, and then left, and then Doug Liman took over, and then he left. Now nobody's attached. I'd say watch the animated Justice League Dark from last year if you need your Justice League Dark fix. Batman's in that one. Man of Steel 2. I don't think this movie is real. I think they just announced it to make Henry Cavill happy. Deathstroke. Again, don't know if this is actually a real film. Just an excuse to make Joe Manganiello happy after he only got like 30 seconds at the end of Justice League. Spoiler alert. And he allegedly got cut from the upcoming Batman film, which we will get to. Black Adam. Why is this movie separate from Shazam? I mean, I know why The Rock is not going to play second fiddle to Chuck, but still. Black Adam is a straight up villain and to my knowledge has never really been an anti-hero on the same level as say Harley Quinn or even Venom. He's a literal mirror image of Shazam. So to do a Black Adam movie and not have Shazam in it at all is like doing a Venom movie without having Spider-Man in it. No, I will not let that go, internet. Lobo. Jason Fuchs is writing the script. Michael Bay is apparently going to direct. This is apparently going to be Warner Brothers' answer to Deadpool. This movie doesn't have a prayer, does it? The New Gods. Ava DuVernay is directing. Cario Salem is writing the script. And I know A Wrinkle in Time wasn't everybody's cup of tea, but it was visually unique and stunning, and if DuVernay can bring even a fraction of that to the new gods, it's going to be well worth our time. Trust me on that. The Batman. Matt Reeves is writing and directing. Ben Affleck was recently announced to be producing and still attached to star in it, and production is going to begin in the spring of next year. Matt Reeves also confirmed that this movie is not based on Frank Miller's year one, and is not a prequel. It is set in the present day DC Cinematic Universe. And look, I'm perfectly okay with this movie taking its time, going slow, making sure all of its ducks are in a row before they begin active production. The worst thing they can do is just fart out a Batman movie for the sake of making a Batman movie. I've liked pretty much everything Matt Reeves has done so far, so I feel like Batman is in great hands. I do think they should just let Ben Affleck go. He clearly does not want to do this anymore, so let's bring somebody in who does. Harley Quinn or Birds of Prey. Originally this was supposed to be a Harley Quinn solo movie with Margot Robbie reprising her role as Harley Quinn, but now apparently this is going to be a Birds of Prey film that also features Black Canary, Huntress, Batgirl, Cassandra Cain, and Renee Montoya as the question. Also Black Mask is going to be the villain. That is legitimately cool. No problems there. Okay, so if this is just a Birds of Prey movie with Black Mask as the villain, that's cool. That's actually something I would want to see. If this is a Birds of Prey movie and a Harley Quinn movie just kit bashed together like that, I don't know if that's going to work. You're taking two completely separate comic book titles and pushing them together in the hopes that they're going to put out something beautiful. Sure, technically this happened with Thor Ragnarok, they took the Ragnarok storyline and the Planet Hulk storyline and made something great, but be real. 
That was Marvel. Do you have enough faith in DC to pull that off now? Regardless, Christina Hodgson is also writing this one and Kathy Yan is scheduled to direct. So this might actually get made. Gotham City Sirens which is completely different from Birds of Prey. This movie was announced very shortly after Suicide Squad came out. It's also set to star Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn and also a currently uncasted Poison Ivy and Catwoman. The villain for this movie was originally supposed to be Jared Leto's Joker, but now it might be Black Mask. I don't know, I'm kind of hoping this movie gets canceled or rolled into Birds of Prey. I'd much rather see a Birds of Prey movie than Gotham City Sirens. Either way, David Ayer is currently attached to this one. Make of that what you will. A Harley Quinn and Joker rom-com. An idea that might actually be worse than a Joker origin movie. John Requa and Glenn Ficaria are set to write and direct this movie. They made Crazy Stupid Love, which was a very good film, but just because it has an apt title for this movie, doesn't mean they should make this movie. Margot Robbie is set to be Harley Quinn again, and Jared Leto is set to be the Joker again. A Jared Leto Joker movie. Because f you, that's why. Again, pretty sure this was only announced to make Jared Leto happy. Rumor has it he was not pleased that they're moving forward with a Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie, so give him something to do before he sends condoms in a box to people again. And finally, the Supergirl movie. As of right now, nobody's really attached to it. I think they said they have a scriptwriter, but it's a brand new announcement, so I'm willing to cut them some slack. Plus, I think with a Supergirl movie, they'll have a much easier time of integrating the Superman mythos into her story, because like it or not, Superman is a very integral part of Supergirl's backstory. And honestly, adding Supergirl to the movies will make movie Superman that much better of a character, in my opinion, at least. So there you have it, friends. 22 movies scheduled for release at some point between now and whenever. 23 if they wind up making Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey two separate films, which at this point, why the hell not? That's a lot of movies. Of those films, only about a third of them have an actual set release date between December of 2018 when Aquaman comes out and the end of 2020. And with the amount of films they've announced, it certainly feels like they're throwing literally everything at the wall just to see what sticks. Maybe this will wind up being a good thing. Sure, many of these probably won't get past the script phase, but the ones that do get made, there's such a variety of them that there's bound to be at least one that you, yes, you specifically, one that you are bound to like. Me personally, there's actually a handful I'm legitimately looking forward to. I'm looking forward to Aquaman and Shazam, obviously. I'm looking forward to Wonder Woman. I'm looking forward to Green Lantern Corps, The New Gods, Birds of Prey, Nightwing, not just because my best Twitter friend is directing it. Hell, I'm even really looking forward to The Batman. Whether or not Affleck is in it, I think that movie is in great hands. I am not saying that Warner Brothers is making all of the right decisions here. We don't need all of these Joker movies. Nobody's gonna see the Cyborg movie. The Lobo movie will most likely be crap, but at least they're trying. And unless Aquaman and Shazam crash and burn spectacularly, we're not gonna see an end to the DC Cinematic Universe anytime soon. So honestly, the best thing to do is probably just sit back and enjoy the ride. Not saying you can't complain about the ride, I'm sure there will be plenty to complain about, but the ride's gonna go on whether we want it to or not. This is the world we live in now. Just gotta accept it. What do you guys think about all these upcoming DC films? Are you excited for any of them? Did I leave any out? I sure as hope not. Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. If you can't wait for any of these films, I put some Amazon links in the description to some comics that I think should help tide you over. If you click on them, you'll help support this channel and get some good reads. I guarantee it. Also down below is a link to Wolf Den Apparel, our brand new clothing line and your number one spot for Will Wolf cosplaying material. Just provide your own glasses. Of course, new videos every Tuesday and Wednesday and Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern is Wolf Den Live. So subscribe to see all of that. Like this video and share with a friend, a friend who needs a reminder of just how many films DC is putting out between now and infinity. It's, it's too much. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time.